Monty coming out, and today, myself and Nero are going to make a whole heap of mistakes. We're going to show you exactly what not to do up in crop territory, so that you can go up there, maybe even see some crops in the wild, but come home in one piece with some great photos and stories to share. Now, crocodiles, they're an aquatic animal's predator, which means they live and hunt in the water and at the water's edge. And that means that I'm already making a big mistake right now. I'm sending out, without knowing, vibrations through the water. Now, have a look as Monty comes out. He's not crashing and dashing across the surface. In fact, if this is deep dark murky water, you wouldn't even know that he was there. But he knows where I am because he can hone in on my location just by the vibrations that I send out. But the biggest mistake that people make in crop territory is this, going down into the water with a crocodile. Because if this was deep, dark and murky, you might be standing down here having a fish, maybe even just having a splash around because it's hot, and little do you know that there's a saltwater crocodile coming in to your location. And these guys are fiercely territorial, so now that he's ready to go, he's all yours your own. Good luck. Food, like we said, but also the territory, want to get back in, slash around again, shut it off. Yeah, why not? What could possibly go wrong? Now you can have a look and see, we were getting further away from Monty, and the first thing he wanted to do was go back to the water. And that's where he wants to go and defend his territory and get us back out. Now I'm not going to argue with him, so I am going to get out. But I'm going to bring him up on the top of the creek over here. Now there's not a whole lot of space here, so we'll see how we go, Monty. But you saw that little lunge and that burst of speed there, and that's really where the crocodile's danger zone is, in that strike range. The rest of the time, you're safe as houses. It's only when you put yourself into that zone, where that strike from the tip of the nose and the base of the tail, where you can reach, that's where you are danger. Now, the crocodile is a scary animal. Don't get me wrong, it is true. But the really intimidating part is the jaw pressure. These guys have got more jaw pressure than any other animal on planet Earth. It's about three and a half thousand pounds per square inch. In relation to us, we've only got about 100. So once they do grab onto that animal, they are absolutely locked on. And they can also strike vertically up and out of the water. Now Nero's going to show us this. I'm going to try to get some footage while we do this. What do you reckon, Nero? Yeah, let's try it. So he's already popped up. He's angled his head up out of the water. I can see him sort of through the boards of the tail or rim. What he's going to do is launch himself vertically upwards, straight up and out of the water. You can imagine he weighs over 300 kilos and he's going to launch all that weight straight up just using that big strong tail, that massive muscular tail, and launch all that weight straight up. So by dangling the food over, as soon as he's locked onto the movement, Oh, strikes up and he, he claps whatever's overhanging in the water. So you can imagine low lying branches with flying foxes, birds, cuscus, all roosting really low in the river system. He can lock onto that move of the animal with a low lying branch, angle the head up. At the moment, he's planting his feet on the base of the pond, build up power on the tail as he sees the movement. Up he comes, grabs it, pulls it in. So he will do this as soon as he hatches it out of the egg and he's super tiny until he's this size even bigger, getting the over half that body length up and out of the water. So it's something you have to keep in mind. You can't overhang the water in crocodile territory. You're going to bring it around here, but absolutely right. Now, you've seen a few strikes from Monty from the water's edge, and you've seen how they can lunge at short distances, they can strike from the water both horizontally and vertically, but we haven't really seen him come out of the water yet. And that's something that we really want to show you because we hear all sorts of myths and rumours about crocs chasing people on land. You've got to run in zigzags. They'll come and death roll you out of your land cruiser. 
maybe drag you off your horse, hang on to you. But have a look, he's right on the water's edge. You still that strike, but let's bring him right out. Now have a look at this. I can literally walk backwards faster than Monty. Oh no, here I hit drop that. Do you mind, Danny? He's, it's just under his chin there. You can grab it. No, I'm not now you can really pretty easily see that I could walk backwards quicker than he could come forwards. Now it's not surprising why. Have a look at his body. He's got that big brown belly, short little stumpy legs, huge big tail that hangs out behind him like a giant handbrake. He's going to get that. And it's really built to life in the water, not life on land. Good work, Monty. That was my bad. Sorry, buddy. Now. I'm so confident that as long as I stay just a little bit further away from him, I'm absolutely fine up here on land. So I'll take a seat up here with Monty. Maybe even lie down. No. Too long. And he's going to make absolutely no effort whatsoever to come forward and get me. That's because he knows he's smart. He knows that he can't chase me down up here on land. Absolutely no way. If I get further away, and go back to his water and start mucking around. What do you reckon, Monty? Nah, he does nothing. You're absolutely safe. Do whatever you want, crop territory. <laughs> Are you enjoying that sun, buddy? Okay. What do you reckon? Muck around your water. Okay, he's pretty good. Neuro, can you go into his water? I'm going to go further. Yeah. Not enough, mate. He's just relaxing and stuff right now. I think we're going to leave him. He's having the absolute time of his life. Clearly this is Monty's show, and we have absolutely no control over crocodiles, which is absolutely fair enough. But all you really need to understand about crocs is don't break the three rules that we've broken here today. Don't go down to the water's edge. When you put yourself in the strike range of a crocodile, right here at the water's edge, you're putting yourself at danger. Four to five metres back, longer than the tip of his nose to the base of his tail, you're out of the strike range of even the largest crocodile to ever exist. Don't overhang the water like Nero showed us. People have been taken by that tail walking method before. And lastly, just don't go swimming with solar water crocodiles. Because you're really just putting yourself into risk when you do these things. And when you don't follow these incredibly simple rules, what happens is you end up creating a conflict between humans and people that don't need to exist. What do you reckon, Monty? I'm even further away, I'm mucking around in your water. You don't actually need to have this conflict between humans and crocodiles. And when we create this conflict and people start calling these guys evil, ugly monsters, they say that they need to be culled, they need to be removed from the population, it's absolutely not true. The only thing that we're doing is degrading their ecosystem by taking out that apex species. Now, I don't know about you, Nero, but you love crocs more than just about anyone. What do you reckon? I mean, we're pretty lucky to have this sort of crystal clear pond, so you can see as Monty moves through the water, as he moves around his habitat, as he sets up for a strike or swims, you can sort of get a better understanding of how the crocodile works. So obviously they are a big, scary, dangerous animal. We're not gonna try and lie about that, but they're an animal that needs to be respected. And if the more you, you understand a potentially scary animal, the more respect you have for them, and in turn, the, the safer they can be, and the safer you can be, and the easier it is to live alongside a crocodile. So that's the whole reason we do this demo, the reason we come in here and get chased around by the crocodile isn't so we try and look cool, it's to show you how easy it is to avoid them, how amazing their crocodile is, and how important its role is in that ecosystem, in that environment it lives in. So, before we pay tribute to Steve up there on the big screen, I thought I'd pay tribute to Hamish over here. It's actually his last day in the zoo, so he's been here a fair few years. One of our best mates, and uh, oh. great reptile keeper, so it's a great loss. But, cheers, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, pay tribute to the big guy, then. Up at big screen, there's Steve -o. So, obviously, Steve loved crocs with everything he had, that's no secret, but what he did was he passed that passion and that enthusiasm onto every single person that works here in the zoo. So it's with that, I'd like to thank you for coming here to the zoo and helping us keep Steve's dream and this whole planet alive. Cheers guys, enjoy the rest of your day. See you later.
My dad taught me from a very early age, being one with the snake, feel it's out. 